hope everybody's doing all right in these uh, challenging times. You know, like a lot of you, I've probably found myself spending more time at home lately, and um, that's given me an opportunity to do these videos more often, but it's also given me an opportunity to build a new little vintage knife collection. Uh, and I've built a little U.S. military pocket knife uh, collection from World War II. And uh, I had a uh, Ulster U.S. Army 10th Mountain Division pocket knife, and I had a later date uh, milk or demo knife. But I didn't really know much else about World War II pocket knives for the military until I got this book back in March. This is Michael Sylvie's The Complete Book of U.S. Military Pocket Knives. And I've done a review on this book. I just think it's excellent. It's really well illustrated. Once I got the book and I could start researching and figuring out what I was doing, I started trying to acquire different examples of uh, these pocket knives from World War II for our armed forces. And I've already done a couple of videos. I've, I think I've already covered seven of these knives. But today I wanted to show you a new one that I just acquired. It took me several months to find it. And um, when I did find it, I had to compete for it pretty hard. Probably paid about $30 more for it than I should have. But uh, I just haven't seen them come up very often. Although, I don't think they, uh, you know, they certainly made a lot of them. So what you're looking at is a um, U.S. Army Air Corps utility knife, also known as a pilot's knife. And uh, this is one of the earlier versions with the bone handles. Uh, but what it basically is, is a 3 and 5 eighths inch equal end cattle knife, three bladed cattle knife. So you have uh, a main spear point blade. This one has a long nail nick. And also while we have it open, we'll show you the tang. This is a Camillus, which you'll probably find most of them to be. Uh, Camillus Cutlery Co., Camillus, New York, USA. Uh, it also has, on the same end, a sheep's foot blade. No markings. And then on the uh, opposite end, with a cutout, it has a pen blade. Now these are all carbon steel tools. Uh, matter of fact, this knife is going to have steel liners, spacers, and bolsters. Uh, this one actually has brass pins, however. So um, it's interesting. Nowhere on here does this say, you know, U.S. military or United States uh, Air Corps, but it definitely is that knife. And um, I'll show you where it's shown in this book that I just talked about. It's on pages uh, 97, 98, and 99. Okay, so here's an image of it on page 97. And uh, you can see that one is exactly like the uh, specimen that I have. And then on the following two pages, 98 and 99, uh, they show another Camillus with the long nail pull there and, and a Utica knife. Now over here they show Utica knives that were Air Corps. Uh, pilot's knives, uh, but they all had slightly different tang stamps. Uh, but the Utica Cutmaster knives had little badges that said USA in them. So it would be just wonderful to find one of those, but I haven't been able to. Um, but here you can see that the Camillus you know, has the um, line bolster, the long nail pull, and um, the same configuration, same tang stamp. Um, this knife is, while I'm on to books, this knife's also referenced in the standard knife collector's guide. And on page 186 and 187, they show an old Camillus ad. They've recopied an old Camillus ad. And uh, it's, it says Camillus knives that went to war. And here you can see um, it shows Army Air Corps utility knife. And here they're showing uh, no badge. And then finally, on uh, Levine's Guide to Knives and Their Values, and this is the uh, fifth edition, pardon me, on page 
290 under section on cattle knives they show the knife Army Air Corps utility knife Camillus bone stag military issue So this knife is uh, referenced as a uh, U.S. Army Air Corps pilot's knife in Michael Silvey's book and utility knife in the other uh, books. Um, but it, the U.S. Army Air Corps, I think, is appropriate for this, uh, this knife because when this knife was made, I believe it was still the U.S. Army Air Corps. Um, there were some administrative changes in June of 1941 and then again in March of 1942 where you started to have the U.S. Army Air Forces. Um, but the U.S. Army Air Corps, I believe, remained a combat unit all the way up until the U.S. Air Force was created in September of 1947, right after the war. But honestly, the most helpful reference uh, to researching this and other, uh, some other World War II uh, pocket knives by Camillus uh, is from a site, a website called Collectors of Camillus, and it's uh, collectors-of-camillus.us. I'll put that up on the screen. But there they uh, have a document entitled Principal Items Delivered to Armed Forces during World War II from 1941 to 1946 by Camillus Cutlery Company. And so I guess this is an official document from Camillus or someone that worked for Camillus or had the records from Camillus uh, because they've put together a 40-something page document that shows all the knives that they produced and delivered uh, to the military during the war years. So you can find uh, some information about these pilot's knives on pages 7 and 8 of that document. They're referred to as Air Corps knives, uh, use, utility, and it says purchased only by the Air Corps. Uh, originally, the model number was S-6018, came out in 1940. It was bone like this, but it also had a nickel silver shield. Uh, and brass linings, and of course a long nail pull like this one. Uh, it was changed in December, December 11th, 1941, to uh, steel bolsters and steel linings and no shield. So that's the one I have here in my hands. Uh, and so then again, it was changed uh, in April 25th, in 1942, and the model number became 14J95C. Um, so this one was only around for about five months between December 41 and uh, April of 42. Now the 14J95C that came out in April of 42 is described as having FG molded stag, no shield, all steel, and a short nail pull I noticed. Now the FG molded stag I can only surmise that might mean fiberglass. You know, those were black plastic. Um, maybe they were like, uh, you know, fiber reinforced nylon or something. Maybe they were a, an early uh, version of that. So maybe FG might mean fiberglass. If anyone knows what that means, please let me know. Um, but uh, there was also another version of that one, 14J95A, which was just like the 14J95C, but it had a clevis and a, a, or bale, and it was for use in life rafts. So that one would be a great one to find as well. According to this document, um, Camillus produced in 1940 29,450 of these. In 1941, uh, 40,000. Then in 1942, in the middle of the war, they really, really ramped up production and produced 775,000. 767 of these. And then finally in 1943 they produced 15,000. So I don't know where the bulk of those lie. I would, th I, I don't know, I would think probably in the later versions. Um, I do know that uh, I had a pretty hard time finding one like this. This was, turns out there are, um, you know, the black plastic handled versions, the versions with the short nail nick, 
they are were made by other manufacturers. So according to Camillus in this document, other manufacturers were Imperial, Case, Utica, Schrade, Ulster, Cataragus. Um, and I had seen some other knives, like some, an Imperial with black plastic and the um, crescent nail nick. I just didn't buy it because I wasn't confident, you know, that was an actual military pilot's knife. I'm not saying U.S. on them anywhere or USA uh, or anything like that. I wanted to make sure I got one exactly like I saw in, the, in my books. So I held out for this one and, again, just recently acquired it. I think it's in really pretty good shape. You know, again, these knives were never built to be collector's pieces. They were uh, utility knives. They, they were, I'm sure that they just thought they would be used up and, and disposed of during the war effort or shortly after, and most of them were. You know, being carbon, uh, steel, and uh, having steel liners and spacers, bolsters, most of them just rusted. Uh, this one was in pretty good shape. I think someone had already uh, polished it up and sharpened the blades, but of course um, I did it again. Uh, I think just a little more expertly. Um, so I think the blades may be a little more work than I'd like to see them, but um, nice and sharp. Again, here's the main swedged here. Pretty full. All the tools have good snap, opening and closing. Here's the sheep's foot blade. The points are a little bit, you know, worn away from use. This knife has seen use. And then the pen blade again, with a little cutout here in the scale for it. I've pretty well completed this collection. I have one more knife on the way. It's actually a replica of a very rare knife, uh, one that I don't feel like paying up for to buy the original. And uh, so when I get that, I will feature that as well. It's on its way from France. So yeah, I actually had to buy one, a replica from France <laughs> to get what I wanted. So that's on its way. Okay, so just a little look at a new addition to my little collection of US military pocket knives of World War II. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.